everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And yes, this is at the easel today. It is a step-by-step -step tutorial. No, I won't be wearing glasses. I'll let you know why these are on. And I, I wish I could say it because I was out partying and this is the after effect, but actually there's a medical reason. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to make sure that today's stream runs properly, that you guys get everything you need, that any adjustments that need to be made are made. Uh, this particular lesson, um, every single step, you will know the color mixes for that step. You will see the two stages of the step and the materials in the step, which you guys have really loved. So we've continued that going. The intro here is live, 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 live. Um, and then we're going to have two Q and A sessions, which are live, 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 of which I will be wearing glasses because I have a dry eye condition. Isn't this not really that exciting? Is it like a party? No, it's not, it's not as exciting as a party, but it is interesting. So I'm, I'm doing some medication for it, and my eyes are really sore and dilated, and so therefore, I'm wearing my owl glasses. She has her... They make her, me feel a little bit better about the her, circumstances. Her tours on. <laughs> this is my sunglasses. But the lesson is taught at the easel in the regular way that you guys are used to. If you have questions during the show, please put those all in caps. Uh, either moderators or myself or John or somebody will answer them during the show. You might get them answered during the two live breaks in the middle and at the end. Um, if you need to know the materials, they're in the description below. They're on the website. There is a traceable for this. It's easiest to do this as an 8x10 if you don't want to do it as a 16x20. But if you had a different size canvas, my suggestion is just add more sky that way. More sky. More sky. Leave everything the same. Just go, more sky. Hmm. So feel like you can change it up. Remember, you can change colors and stuff. I give you the colors that I use. But if you have a color that's close enough, hey, it's close enough. Don't stress yourself out on that. You should be able to watch this on Facebook. You should be able to watch this on YouTube. It will be up for replay after. In other words, the resources, the materials, even the step-by-step -step mini book when it's finally released will be up after. Um, the other thing to know is that sometimes on Facebook, the event says this live is over and you can't watch the replay. If that ever happens to you, you can come over to YouTube and watch it easily or from our website and watch it easily. Or if you're really good at Facebook, you can find the video section on my page and then rewatch anything. But that's just where you're at. Just know that it is there and it is up for replay and you're good. Um, I feel like I've told you all the things. Do you feel like you're prepared to paint this gorgeous bird? I think that may be all of the stuff. All right. So get your brushes, get everything. Let's come back and we're going to begin this fabulous project. I'll see you for the Q&A in about 40 minutes. John, yes. are you ready to jump into this lesson? Yes. I am ready to jump on in. Now, in the first step, we're going to do a little bit of sketching. I want you to know that there's a traceable available to you. You can do this on the 16 by 20, follow along in the drawing in option, or you could do it on an 8 by 10 at a table using the traceable. And either of those choices is perfectly fine. But I'm kind of excited to show you how easy this is to sketch in. Are you ready, babe? Uh huh. Uh, you guys ready at home? Well, of course let's they do are. it. That I mean, they came, they showed, right? Like, you, that's probably what you came for as an art lesson. All right, let's do this. Let's do it. Okay. So here I have my 16 by 20 surface. I'm going to get a big, big round brush. You could use any size round brush you want, but I'm going to get a big one because then I'm paint it quickly. And I'm going to load it with just burnt sienna. Let's go over what's on my palette here too. Cad yellow, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, uh, Mars black, quinacridone magenta, cad red uh, medium, cad yellow medium, phthalo green, and titanium white. I will probably be adding a little ultramarine blue later on in the lesson, but I'm just starting out here. All right. Now, I'm going to come up to the right-hand side, about a hand down, make a little mark there, and we are going to paint a rough little branch. Just a little angle branch. Well, and, and just have it be kind of rough, right? I'm going to come in here, and it's going to be rough. Rough. Maybe a little, little of that branch kind of come off there. How they do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes branches have uh, little elements of roughness coming off. So this is going to swoop down and go across. On your branch, you will want it to be a little thinner as it goes down. All right. I'm going to come here and make sure this is a little bit thicker up here. And then um, from the right, I'm going to go down at a slight angle, come over and over again. Okay. So pressing hard first. To thicken my line, right? Yeah. 
Now, normally I would do like the whole thing kind of blue, but this is a different style of painting. Kind of like a daily painting style, but on a big canvas. I like when there's like that white background. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. So we'll be painting this all in blue in a minute, but by getting this in this way, mm -hmm. we are going to have some fun. Now, you'll notice that I do let these kind of come off and, and have some little rough areas. I mean, kind of do the general bird. So first, I'm going to put in a little bit of a circle. Make sure you have at least two or three fingers above the branch. I'm going to fill in that circle. That's my bird body. I'm going to come here and do a little triangle beak. Where the beak is, you're going to want to come up a little bit back on kind of a straight line and then tuck into the body for that little punched in little robin head <laughs> that they do. I'm going to come off the back of the bird and kind of come in. Now the trick is I do want to have the back tuck into the wing. And remember we're just giving this the dark base to work from. Since we're going to be kind of doing some blue around here. Like, and I can just check that right there, see if I like that. And that's going to be okay, even though I'm going to come in with some blue. Right? Now, another thing that I can do, right, at this stage, is I can kind of come in with a little black and brown. And rough in what will be flowers and leaves later. These are little, kind of see how I'm pulling that little point in? Some of these will be all free on that, but this kind of gives us a start. And that will give them a little depth when we go to put them in. That's so just a pull back on the brush and then a little wiggle here. Maybe there's like a little round one there. This is just loose. And we're not going to get too worried about it at this stage. Another little one here. And see how it's kind of a regular, like, look, I'll pull back and I'll kind of wiggle it in a regular shape. Like a little circle. Push there. Let's put some of this here so we know what's going on here. These are like little pull back strokes. But what they're doing is they're helping me know where my buds and flowers are going to be. And they're also giving me some depth. I'm going to pull a little line right there and make an irregular sort of circle right here. You can see they're a little bigger than a finger, a little bigger than the branch. Pull that. So you can see I just touch the brush in and I pull it into the branch. I'm not doing details. This just gives me an idea of where all this stuff is. It's kind of like a paint way of sketching it in. Yeah, just a little sketch. Now I'm coming back with my blue paint, so some of this might, you know, get lost in the roughness of it. But this overall design, it's going to stay there. And I want a lot of flowers up here, so I've got kind of lots of space to put that and leaves and everything. I think that's a nice little layout. All right.
So let's take a look at that. So it looks like some weird black brown shapes coming on on in, right? Mm -hmm. And the little bird shape. Again, because we're going to be painting around all these objects, some of that will get painted back. It'll create um, a really gorgeous kind of rough expressive look that's real fun. And it's going to be friendly for you, the beginner. Remember, we have the steps. We've got the mini book. We've got resources. They're free for you. So you can download those for free. Even if we ever have them in the store, you'll still have access to those in some self-giddy downloadable way. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's come back in the next step and I'll show you what you're going to do next. So hopefully you guys got through the sketching it in or tracing it on however you chose to do that segment of this project really well. Remember to take a deep breath, be forgiving of yourself. You can do this. Brush pressure thickens and thins lines. So as long as you got through that, we're going to put in the background. We're going to put in a lighter value up here and deepen it as we go. It's all going to be in aquas. I'm going to show you the materials I use. I'm not actually going to be using any special gels or anything this time, John. Hmm. Now, I am going to pull down my guard okay. for my paintings. So it's, it's going to protect them. Let's do that. Protect the art, shall we? Because <laughs> uh, I'm a little close to it for comfort. You know, splatter, splatter, splatter. Something for you to think about at home. Do you have anything nearby that can get messed up? Because those backgrounds can get messy, especially on bigger canvases. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, let's hop on it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to use a pretty big brush. This is a one and a half inch cutter. It kind of looks like a, those brushes that you might paint your house with, right? It is an artist brush, hog brush, but just something big that lets you paint the area in easily. And then where I have to be in sort of tight, I'm going to use my number 10 Goldilocks from the Art Sherpa line to kind of get in those things. It's like a medium synthetic bright. Okay. So cutter, bright, these are the two. I'm going to be using my titanium white, my ultramarine blue, and a little of my cad yellow to get the colors. And then if I need to blend, I'm going to use a dry brush to do that. Blending can be done with memes, but it can also be done with a dry brush. Mm. Get this lightly wet, not like super wet, lightly wet. And I'm going to load up my white first. And the reason I do that is it's easy to darken a color, hard to lighten it. And I want it kind of light up top like the sun's coming through. I might even get a little green in that. I'm fairly thoroughly mixed. And let's come here and start to paint that in. Hmm. Just a brushy brushy. Yeah, very rough, right? You can paint the sides if you are uh, not going to frame. And come in and put a little more blue in the mix as I go, right? Mm -hmm. If I need to add a little smidge, I mean, be light with the water, though, especially with uh, these natural bristle brushes because they can uh, really get waterlogged. Oh, yeah. And this is a very rough painting, isn't it? What do you mean by rough? I'm not being, like, neat and tidy with my brush strokes. Hmm. Okay, well, then... Yeah, I guess you are being rough. It's not like you were like boxing it around the ring. Yeah, I'm not boxing it, but I am just doing very kind of loose brush strokes and just getting it in. I don't know. You're kind of oh. playing that surface like a drum, though. Playing it like a drum. I'm just making sure this is fairly light up here. And I'll do some little adjustments around the bird. Um, generally, I do that just to kind of make sure that the values let him... Uh, really stand out in value from the background of the canvas. Now, why didn't you do this first? I like the effect of painting around. Sometimes it looks very uh, impressionistic. See, this is something that it took me a long time to understand, like that these choices really impact how the final product look and gives it a lot of... Um, uh, unique feel to it. Yeah, you know? each one does its own thing. Well, I and mean, you can see I'm not that worried if some of that paint gets on the branch right now. Right, I'm more worried about this background. And the other thing is, is that I can kind of think about how the light and dark is going around all the objects.
Getting a little hair that came off. Do you want to paint the edges really well? Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to kind of smooth anything over, I can get the brush a little bit damp. You can see that and sort of give a little blendy blend. Get a little yellow back in there. Mm -hmm. Too much yellow. <laughs> and again, I'm not using any medium. And the acrylic paint, it will dry pretty quick on us. It will want to anyways, dry very, very quickly. So that's what we're fighting against. Mm -hmm. Now I've got this rough area. I'm going to kind of rinse this brush out and I'm going to dry it off with a towel, right? Because look, it can get real wet. Mm -hmm. So I've got to definitely wring it out. And then I'm going to take this brush and kind of pull uh, closer lines around my objects. This is a lighter blue right here. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those paintings where you don't try to hide the brush strokes. We're not trying to hide the brush strokes at all. And that's very interesting to how it plays to paint around the objects in the foreground. Which is, I just think is really cool. Like yeah, I like it a lot, actually. I, I didn't understand it at first. It took a long time for me to see these different things. But, well, uh, and you know, in a little painting, it's it's not even that challenging to do. But sometimes on the bigger ones, it is challenging to do because the spaces are so large. True, yeah. But it's interesting how that um, background that's painted sort of actually around that foreground object creates more focus in the background on that object. It can. It like, totally can. It's like, an interesting it's like, interpretation you're having there, and it can. Well, because it's sort of like the background is being constructed around the foreground. Therefore, all of its emphasis is just by the nature of its own construction, subject to and informed by the foreground object. I'm going to get a little uh, kind of yellow and, and blue together and go maybe a little bit deeper into the green up here. And uh, that way that I can kind of come up with some lighter colors along the bird. You're all like, I just kind of like painting around it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all thinking deep about it. You're deep. You've gone deep. But it's not wrong. But here's what I know. I know in this bird... Right, that I'm going to have a light value up top, and you know, uh, maybe a deeper value at the bottom. It lets me kind of decide. Oh, hey, See, I maybe feel... here I want to make sure that my background sky is a little bit lighter. This is funny because I always found myself to be much more, uh, dare I say, scholarly in the pursuit of the arts. <laughs> Um, really? Far less than I practical. mean, I went to school with you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, that's what I mean, but I, I don't have a practical understanding of it. That's not true. He super does. I mean, but, you know, it. I have a much more uh, academic understanding of painting than probably I do from a hands-on. Well, you never really were into painting. No, that's true. I'm not. I'm not dismissing it, but that's what I'm saying is that the difference in how I sit here and pontificate about the 
underlying inspirations of the artist and how they've chosen to play the brush strokes. And they're like, I thought it was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I did. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of come into like a slightly darker blue as I come through here. And you can see I go right up to the flowers. I go right up to the branch. I, I do use scholarly loosely. Very so loosely. true. Yeah, you know, like slightly more than internet educated. I don't know. The internet these days is pretty about it. Hey, I, I sat through Tally's classes. I learned. Well, we all did. So I kind of shaved in a little bit there, and I'll be putting wings back and everything. But you can see that what I've managed to do is by uh, coming in there, I can create some value focus around the bird that lets me really play with him later on. And then this kind of rough blue around everything is really rather lovely. My canvas is thoroughly covered with paint and anywhere that it's not, I will definitely be coming back in and making sure. And you can see I'm painting in a very rough and expressive and impressionistic manner, which just means like, as John was saying earlier, I'm not hiding the brush strokes of the construction. The image is going to come forward in the color and uh, in the value, how light or dark that color is. Hmm. It's coming in through here, so it's a little bit fussy. It is, but it it's that fussiness that creates the focus on the foreground ob object. It really does. Without it, it's just sort of um, the. I think it's the brush strokes that that create that um, sort of underlying emphasis. Yeah. Because uh, it's gonna be a little bit lighter around here. I'll have to come back and lighten that up in a second because. Um, so where I'm going to put a dark flower, I would want a lighter background. And where I would put a light flower, I want a darker background for contrast. So you're, you're preemptively planning that a little bit. I'm preemptively planning that completely. Okay. So let's talk through that lower branch then. So this, this guy right here, where we're going to have light pink flowers and bright greens, we can be much darker. And then on this top side or edge where it's going to have lots of deep pink flowers, I'm going to definitely go uh, uh, lighter in that. Okay, so the dark spot above the bird was it left there intentionally. Oh, yeah, because we're going to remember we talked about that. He's going to be light up top and this is going to let him show and he's going to be dark down here. So right. this is what we're doing. So just I'm just wanting to make sure I recap what I'm watching. Play by play. Play by play. Or brush stroke by brush stroke. Because that's, that's what I do. I watch paint dry. You watch paint dry. And you can see I'm letting my brush strokes be very expressive and very rough here. Now let's come around this outer edge out here now that this is maybe a little drier. Might even grab a little of that yellow to go into that blue. I'm not even uh, worrying about the second brush right now because I'm just liking how the brush strokes are feeling. You're just making it. Yeah, just kind of making sure. My sky is painted in some sense as thoughtfully as my subject matter. Mm. It's multi-tonal. And again, these are sort of, they look a little haphazard, but you have a plan here. Right. Very much a plan. A cutting plan. 
involving blue. <laughs> well, it's a robin, and I I'm, I intend to paint some more robins, so buckle up, buttercups. Birds are coming, you know. Mm. And I like it when we get to the easel sometimes and make a big, more substantial piece. Yeah, me too. I'm in here and... You're on my left instead of on my right. Sorry, I'll back up. No, I mean in the studio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh oh. No, no, Am no, I doing just... that thing again? <laughs> no, it's just our the, the hand studio is on the right hand side. The easel studio is on the left. As thanks. I'm kind of just having a blast here. I really enjoy this. Uh very, very much. So you can see we're just creating kind of a roughness around this spot. Now I may get back into my big brush again, as you do, and come into this like deep blue. Oh yeah. Hit it with another coat, kind of in the darker blue, making sure that surface is Super considered. Look at us being just rough with it. And I think that's something that we forget that we can do is, is uh, you know, rough up our canvas. Yeah. Get some of that weekly stress out. You know, they've got those rooms now that you can beat up. Oh, yeah. I've heard about those. The break it rooms. I don't need that. I got my canvas. <laughs> and at the end, I don't have a broken room or a mess. I'm going to have a big, gorgeous painting. I want some more white on my brush. Yeah. So I'm going to come here because I still want to kind of work this out up here. I want this to be a little more finished. So I'm going to get my, my brush a little bit wet. And so canvas is very, very covered. And see, I pick up a little bit of the yellow here just with the edge of the bristles. Mm -hmm. Just kind of dust that around. You see, this is almost like a dry brushing that happens because the, you know, the background has been drying as we go. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to know that you can do that. You can create these like layers and, and roughness. Get back from it and just make sure that I'm happy with the value. Again, rinse out, dry off. So it's damp right now. You kind of get light on the bristles right there where I'm kind of blending it through. It's important that you wipe, I'm back into my number 10. It's important that you keep your brushes clean on the paint. Mm -hmm. So like if you have the time at the step to pause when you're done and uh, wash the brushes that you've used, it's not a terrible idea. Brush, uh, wash between steps. Yeah, it really isn't, especially when you get into the big brushes like we did here. I'm just making sure that this is. Keep them clean. Well thought out. But you can see, like, we know where our branches are, right? We see where they go.
Am I being more thoughtful than I probably need to be? Huh. <laughs> Maybe. But it's fun. It's fun, right? And it's more than just slapping a coat of blue on a background. I mean, we can do that, and we'll do some really simplified one-hoot paintings coming up. You know? Sometimes understanding that you can take things but to that, this place is super important. But roughly sketching in your your foreground and then bain, painting the background to create the emphasis is really kind of interesting. Yeah, I like it. It does take a little bit more thought. Precision. You do have to make some more choices. You do. You just keep trimming. Yeah, I'm just thinking about like the depth of his beak and then how the head comes up and just making sure that we've got that. Making little adjustments for later. For later. It's what makes, uh, oh, I didn't need to get into the green. That's okay. Got into the green by accident. All right. I feel like we can dry this. Yeah. Um, it was pretty involved. I bet you, if you're doing the bigger canvases, I bet you're exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a lot for a background, but doesn't it look like a big luminous sky now? And it's got mm. that sort of multi-tonal, multi-hue feeling that we sometimes get out in nature. So you can do this. Give yourself time. Remember, uh, if you're having trouble covering the paint, sometimes just letting it fully dry is important. Um, it You don't have to have the big artist brush that I have. You could have like a uh, you know, just a house brush. Those I've tested them; they do work. Um, this particular one was Hog, and I picked it for its rough expression and the split ends that Hog has on the ends. John, do you think they can do the next step? I think. I so. think you guys can. I'm here. I know you can do it. Let's come back uh, with our canvas fully dry. You take the time it takes for you to dry five to ten minutes sometimes. Yep. There, dry, and we will paint the next step. So on this step, we're going to start adding in some of the fun details on the branch, mm. get into some fun color mixes, which means we put out a little more on our palette. I'm really excited to show you how to do this because it's kind of fun and expressive. The thing that you've got to do is let go a little bit of your need to control the flower and the leaf and just let the leaf be. Mm. Can we let the leaf be? Let it be. Let's find out. All right. So I'm going to come here and I have this. Number 10 Raphael Hogg uh, de Argentini brush, but it's a nice little kind of thumbnail size bright oh. with a hog bristle. And I'm going to go ahead and get my brush a bit wet and I'm going to mix some very light orange. See this here? Some very orange. light orange. It's almost tangerine. Almost a tangerine. And then I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to it. And come along here. some highlights on there. add some highlights to the branch you know you've got to have some of those and I'm coming along with pretty strong strokes and uh, what that means is that I'm I'm not being too delicate with it I know that a lot of this will get covered by the flowers as they bloom yeah but this is nice and then if you do it this way no matter what part of the branch is peeking out your branch will look super good oh yeah Notice that I'm kind of coming along and doing a strong little sideways stroke on the edge or the toe of the brush. Mm -hmm. And so it gives that branch a bit of a feel. Now I'm going to come in and get a little of my burnt sienna. Making short er strokes, kind of like little dashes, kind of starting to talk about the bark texture. And you can see the dark value underneath is really helpful because it's really created some depth. Still on the toe, working the edge. And again, I know a lot of this is going to just you 
now. And change that up. If I want to go back and get a little of my ochre there, I can come in and highlight where necessary. I'm going to rinse out a bit, and then I've got one last layer. I'm going to take a little of my brown and my black. Again, get that dark brown branch color. Again, much will be covered because we've got so many little flowers and leaves to put on. But it's a highlight, a middle tone, and a shadow at the base. I see. Now, I kind of rough the brush around so that the branch has some personality to it. But that's what we're going to get there. All right. So to make this easy, because you kind of had three little color stages there, um, I am going to stop this step here and in the next one show you the flowers and the leaves. That way you have a lot of difference. Also, we really want to dry these brown colors. And the reason we want to dry them is so they don't get up into our flowers and our leaves. We want to have control over those values and hues. So dry it up thoroughly and meet me back here. We're going to put some flowers and leaves. So John, flowers and flowers and leaves are fun, right? For you guys at home, flowers and leaves, I promise you are fun. But if you're new to painting, they can feel stressful because you have a lot of visual memory of them and sometimes we want to control it. So this is going to be an activity in gesturally implying a flower more than really creating each detail of the flower. And it's kind of a fun way of painting. I'm going to show you how you can totally succeed at it. Okay. Let's hop on this. I said, okay. Oh, he said, okay. I was like, I don't know what he's doing. All right. If you have any questions, remember, put them all in caps during the show and leave them in the comments after the show. We are here to help. All right. I'm going to take the same brush I was using earlier because it's just a nice brush. Which one is that? Uh, this is the number 10 de Argentini by Raphael Hog Brush. It's just a nice one to use. I'm going to make sure it's not uh, too soaked. And I'm going to begin with a little of my CAD red medium and my quinacridone magenta smidge of white to kind of bring this up and i'm going to make a strong kind of curved stroke coming over and i will make another little shorter stroke and then come back and counter stroke so just these strong strokes maybe a little one there back a bit. So this is a dark pink. And this is I'm putting the dark pink out. Cad red, quinacridone magenta, titanium white. Let's come here. Another kind of big strong curve. See how we do these strong and curved? Yeah. That's what we're doing. All right, so this is going to come out a bit and back to a triangle also. Maybe one here. So it's like pull back, pull back, and then kind of curve. So much like the gestural area of the branch, you know, we don't really see it all yet. We're going to see it as we go. It can be a little hard to know that for sure it's going to work out. But it is for sure going to work out. Here I like to kind of make sure it tapers overall in its shape. And down here is a similar deal. Some of these are buds. And some of these are open. Like this one I'm going to do is almost in a square. Still a little pink at this point, but we're going to have to switch into some lighter colors pretty soon 
coming back through. So again, cad red, quinacridone magenta, little bit of titanium white. You keep, I keep thinking you're going back, so it's like, back, back. there's a lot of palette yeah. work today. There's a lot of palette work today, right? Especially in these flowers and leaves. There's going to be a ton of palette work. You can count on it. You know, I'll make that. Now I'm going to come in and get, oh gosh, just a lot more white on my brush. And this time a smidge of yellow. And we just kind of create some highlights there. See how loose it is? I do. Loose means that I'm just gesturally talking about the shape of the flower, but not worrying too much about creating each petal. Little curve strokes, little straight in strokes. Uh, maybe just a little more yellow and peach into this. Yeah, that's nice. So just adding little bits of highlight. All right, I'm going to come in and maybe these flowers now maybe get a little pinker in there. So just a lot more kind of white into it. Mm -hmm. Let's come here and get the highlights. Start putting in some like white flowers. This is the top of the highlight of the flower, isn't it? Well, and some of these are much lighter. So that's the important thing to remember is that some of these are much, much lighter. This is where that interesting contract, what do you call it? Not con right. Contrast. Just picking up some of the top of that. From the background you did earlier. Yes, that's why we put that in there, so that there was some. No, we want some. Contrast. Some we contrast. Some. We want it. I'm going to come right here. Three values, right? Just touching the tops of the leaves. Yep. And then sometimes I might come back with a little, we can come in and create just a little bit of kind Ooh. of bright interest. And you're doing that with the yellow. Yeah, with a little bit of yellow maybe and white. In a few places. It's fun to kind of do. So you're not doing it on all of them? No, not everywhere, not all the time. So I'm going to come down and do like maybe some centers here. We'll see where we get as we go, right? Mm -hmm. Just those little touches. I'm going to come in with just the lightest pink I can. Almost white. Make sure that I'm and kind of capturing the top of those petals. A 
want to add depth, I can come back in and add depth. Come in and make sure there's a little yellow in the center. And just be playful or playful as possible. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. let's call that a step. We'll do the warm flowers first, then we'll put in some cool flowers, and then um, we'll tie in some leaves and then kind of do any little detailing at the end. So come back for another lovin'. step. It's a puppy yes. lovin'. She's down there the whole time going, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. <laughs> See you. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. When we come back, more flowers. Your mic's not. Oh, I don't think your mic turned on. Your mic did not turn on. I'm going to have to go over. They can't see you, but they can't hear you. Do, do, do. Let me see if I can push the button. Yeah, I just got to find the button. I found it. There it goes. Okay. So we're turning on the sound. Yes, I'm back in my sensitive eye protectors just because my eyes are dilated and dry and I'm taking some new medication for that. But we like to do a live, live, live Q&A in the middle of these. So on Facebook, Janet Smith, thank you so much for the stars. Um, Kay says, I don't have magenta. What can I mix to come close? And I know actually that was asked a couple of times. We had a couple pictures. Elise Henley over on YouTube asked that. Mm. I don't have magenta. So magenta is a red that is a bit pinkish and has a blue cast to it, whereas cad red is a red that is orangish and has a yellow cast to it. So if you have just other paints, right, what you want to do is look at your paints and go, which one gives you the best pink? And to test that, all you have to do is add white. So if the pink that you're seeing is kind of a cool, bright pink, that's probably the closest you have to the magenta. If it looks like coral, you probably have a warm red. And that's a way that you could test it. Just grab the one that looks like the pink, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a primary red, you, you can just add a little blue to it and it will become magenta or a little yellow and it will become more like cad red. But very often people don't have true primaries in their kit. They usually have one that's warm or cool and you've just got to find the one that's cool. Um, I want to say hi to our Facebook fam, Donna and Georgie and Shell and Janet and Anne and Isabella. And Terry and Linda and Margaret and Carla, Cherry and Mary. So hi guys over there. Um, thank you for Marilyn for the stars. Um, and also thank you, uh, Rebecca, for the stars. And Rebecca, I hope you're feeling better. Um, everyone send Rebecca some healing love. I kind of watch you guys on Facebook. I don't want to imply that I'm a stalker in any way. But I do pay attention to my feed. And when I see you guys saying, hey, I could feel better or... Something's going on in your lives. I always send a warm and happy thought. Over on YouTube, Kim says, I was wondering if the heat will get will uh, get way too dry, to make it dry way too fast. Uh, it can. You can have a problem where if you're running a fireplace or you have a lot of heat, that things can dry way too fast. And, um, you know, you've got to add like a glazing medium or something to slow it down or put a humidifier next to your easel. There are things that you can do to slow that down, but that's a thing that can happen to us acrylic artists. And we have to use either mediums or environmental controls to fix that. Thank you, Sherry over on Facebook. I appreciate that. Um, on Facebook, Elizabeth McGinnis says, what brand of paint? So I'm mostly painting um, Sennelier acrylic, uh, which is, uh, these little ones here. I also do Golden Artist Colors and I also have some Artist Loft 3 in the set. I have a blog about acrylic paint and I list all the ones that I personally use and like. Doesn't mean of the thousands of other brands there aren't good ones. There are. <laughs> Absolutely. These are just the ones that I like and that's in that blog. So maybe my mods can drop that link. Over on YouTube, Mary Myers. Hi, Mary. Um, are you painting with your wrist or from the shoulder? So when I, it's an interesting thing. I do try to paint from my shoulder as often as possible, but when you see a hand go up the brush into the ferrule, then you're tightening up and you tend to paint out more from your wrist in that moment. You're trying to maybe control something or have a, a tighter motion in there. Whereas when I'm trying to loosen up, I try to back up the brush and paint more from my body. Mm. Joanne says, can I suggest a bird for you to paint? I live on Bonaire in the Caribbean and we have very beautiful words that are paint worthy. 
yeah, send a picture to support at theartsherpa.com. We do this thing called a bird hop with my mom, which is a painting collaboration that my mom and I do. And we paint six birds in one day. And it sounds like you might have just other environments that would be pretty too. It probably share pictures because Shutterstock's gotten weird lately. Yeah. Um, Rebecca asks over on Facebook, are you going to be doing Valentine paintings on acrylic or just the watercolors? I'm doing them in acrylic as well this year. Um, just, this just next no. weekend isn't scheduled up. I've had uh, weird <laughs> health issues. All of I'm, Cinnamon's paintings are full of love for they are, everyone. But I am doing specifically Valentine's paintings this year. My eyes, have just, they're okay, and I have meds, and they're going to work, and they're great. Um, they're just not working yet, and it took us a minute to figure out what was going on. But I've been to the doctor. I'm okay. She got I don't the want drops. you to worry. I'm okay, but it was sucky. They're dehydrated um, the eyes. Uh, Mary Gardner says, that is a seriously big brush, canvas size, 16 by 20. And the bigger size canvases, I do suggest you use a larger brush um, than on smaller canvases. And that's just so that you have a brush that's relational to the surface size, so you have some control as an artist. Um, Lisa, I came on late. What size brush was used for the branch and bird? Thank you. So I'm sure that the moderators got that. Um, I do believe it was like a number eight round, but I'm pulling that from memory. However, it's specifically listed in the description below. We do timestamps um, for the chapters that match a mini book that we write that's released after the show. And those steps that you see that come through where it says this brush at this step and these colors at this step will also be mirrored in that mini book which isn't just a list of steps, it's actually instruction that's written out. Because sometimes you guys learn visually, and you also like to learn uh, auditorily, like listening, but it's also, you know, reading, kind of that kinesthetic learning. So those three types of learning um, really help you guys succeed. And the point of this is you guys have a great painting. And we have a second part of this still. Um, the second part of the video. Yeah, we have a second part. So there's, this isn't over. This is just, this is the halftime show where the I half answer time. questions. And then we'll go back and then I'll answer some more questions at the end. Uh, Marion Gardner, is this the same way you could create fog? Yeah, you could actually do a good fog effect here. Um, what is the darker blue, phthalo blue or altering blue? I would say that, um, think of the blue like this. They're both almost the same hue. If you photograph both blues and you take the color out, they're the same darkness, the same value. Um, the phthalo blue is a green bias or a yellow bias, and the altering blue is a red bias. Um, so depending on which side of the argument on you, you might be like, well, ultramarine blue is closer to red, so it's warmer. I, and then some people are like, but it's in a different, it's down the scale, so it's cooler. There's a bunch of arguments on that that get deep into color theory. For you beginning artists, just know that phthalo blue has a green hue, so it makes better greens. And ultramarine blue has a red hue, so it makes better purple. That's what you need to know at home. Um, more birds. You mean like bird hops? Yes, like bird hops. I love bird hops. Um, Ken A says, I was thankful that Cindy isn't joining the herd and doing sippy, sappy Valentine themed paintings yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay. They're so, all sappy for you. You know, uh, I like Valentine's. I just don't like to go out or I like, I like the day after Valentine's. We call it half off chocolate day. Mm -hmm. where we like to go out the day after. I also like to go out the day after Mother's Day, but that's just because before COVID, I wasn't into the crowds. I just now have an excuse for my weird eccentric behavior. Yeah, <laughs> but justified. there will be some Valentine's paintings. Not all Valentine's paintings, but there will be some Valentine's paintings. Um, are you using a flat or bright hog on the flowers? So all of my brushes, because I paint acrylic, tend to be bright, which is a shorter length out from the ferrule. Um, flats are a longer length out and you'll see watercolor and oil artists use those more. And that is about the way our paint applies to the surface and our preferences. Oh, YouTube. Thank you, Farah. Uh, Elise Henley says, can you use cobalt blue? Yeah, you can. Um, that one, I, you can go to the golden website and check beyond this, I believe is a middle range. I think cobalt's right in the middle. It's not really green bias or red bias. So you can use it for either. Oh, um, my question about the phthalo blue or ultramarine blue is specific to the bottom of the painting. Which did you use on the background? I believe I used the phthalo blue, but again, it would be in that step. So if you go to the steps and like when we run, like you'll see the chapter marks and you can just click it and you go to that. At the beginning of the step where it says step one, step two, and I think this is in step two, you can see 
Um, I'm pretty sure it was still blue. You, but you can see it'll specifically tell you that and what mixes were there so that you know, oh, she used that brush, she used those colors. All right, shall we finish this project? We could. We could. Now, if you're here on the replay, you can just fast forward through all the questions. Uh, for those of you guys that have questions, put them all in caps, and I'll be at the end of the show to answer them for you. All right, let's get back to painting the bird. All right. Well, the truck's visit was very much appreciated, but we've got to get on and paint some cool flowers. It can help to have the flowers here dry, but it's not absolutely necessary. So wherever you're at in the painting, remember you can always pause this video. So it's okay. You can do this in stages or in days. Just save those chapters that were time stamping so you can come back to it easily again. All right, I'm going to show you how to do this cool flower. It kind of puts these flowers in shadows. It's a neat effect. It applies to whether you're painting realistically or impressionistically. Same brush I've been painting with, number 10, Darshanini. I can't even say it, it's a hog brush. <laughs> this time I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine blue over to my Quinn magenta and make kind of a cooled lavender, if you see that there. Mm. Got a little excited finding it. And come and get some. Very light, let's a little more blue into it even. I want it to be very cooled. See if that's light enough. I'm gonna come here and talk about these bigger flowers that are here. Maybe curve a stroke here. Keep it cool. Keep it cool, man. And I also kind of have them be a little bit bigger. So they're sort of fun. And I'm going to add maybe a bit of one there. Just maybe in a little shadow. And sometimes it's helpful to put a little bit of the shadow on these mm -hmm. when you're lightening them. You are lightening them, but they're shaded. I don't know. It's a weird thing to do, but I like doing it. Yeah. And I may even come in the. Uh, And some of this. Maybe like right there. Just play with it. See how the more blue they are, the cooler they are? Mm -hmm. So cool, man. Even if it's lighter, it's still pretty cool. This lets us come back with very light colors and kind of work those in. Rinse your brush out thoroughly for a second. And we're going to let this cool area have a bit of a dry. While we do that, let's get some green going. All right. I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together. Mm -hmm. I like these two. I'm going to warm it with just a bit of cad yellow. I'm going to start to add some deep greens to stems and the basis of leaves. And almost buds, you know? Yeah. Play with that, think about that.
It's that same color mix. Mm -hmm. I like how the little green goes in there. Yeah, it's fun to tuck the green in. It's dark, right? But it's going to have this very light highlight that we're going to be adding in. I was going to say, you generally put some highlights on those. I generally do. For so many reasons. <laughs> All the little leaves. Yeah, we just come down and put them a few places. She's got a feeling, doesn't she? She does. <laughs> She's like, not going to miss it this time. All right. I've got my green here, but I'm going to rinse out my brush quite thoroughly. Wipe it off. Just make sure it's kind of dry. And we're going to go ahead and add some yellow to the mix. Maybe even a little burnt sand to kind of really get it in there. So it's kind of like a green gold. Tuck some of that color some places. Fun to paint, right? Little touches. Notice that I'm just touching the brush. Mm -hmm. And that tells us a bit about leaves and spaces and all kinds of things on our branch. It does. We don't have to wind ourselves up so much. You're painting a smaller canvas. These will just be smaller strokes, but they'll still work. And you can see what I mean. Like the branch shows, but a lot of it's hidden. Mm -hmm. That's all. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Yeah. Just tucked. All right. One, you know this was coming, right? One more value. <laughs> Let's get right into the yellow. I haven't rinsed my brush out. So this is a very yellow green. I'm going to add some white to it. And the important part here is not the exact tone, just that it's a little bit lighter to provide contrast. Yeah, yeah. So you're just, you know, you're burnt sienna, you're thalo green. Uh, we did that earlier with a little bit of cad yellow, but we've come over here and added so much more cad yellow. We didn't rinse our brush out, right? Uh -huh. We had this green right here, and then we add a little bit of white to it. So you're just getting the three tones. Don't you take one tone with me. Don't you do it. You Good. better take three tones. I know you guys look a lot at the back of my head while we're painting at the easel, but <laughs> just sometimes we look. At, it's hard to. It's like the close up on the on this. We don't see. Where'd you go? There you are. So the close up when we're looking over your shoulder, we don't see you. It's so full of flowers. Yeah, that's what, but that's what you want. You want to really feel that that's blooming and that, oh, that's just lovely. It is. It really is. It's okay. very pretty. There is one last touch on here that I think we're ready for now that What's we've done that? the green. What's so that? It's touch? kind of a broken step where we did the cool flowers and we got the green. Now we're going to add some highlights around to really kind of show these flowers uh, bright and, you know, beautiful. So I'm going to add a lot more white over here. Okay. Ooh.
much like everything else, we're just capturing little elements, right? Maybe a little yellow in here. See how that's working? Oh, that's lovely. The flowers are just blooming, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Rinse out. And any little centers that I feel like, you know, I didn't quite capture. Well, guess what? I can capture it now. Let's get some good tangerine going. A little bit of color playfully hard to be playful when you're really new to painting but you do you want to be playful and you're like oh those are quite dark so what do I want to do I want to rinse out big step I know get a little of my yellow a lot of my white There you go. I think we've really, I think we've really captured that, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. You know, we can get back into our really bright orange and yellow with a little bit of white here. Oh, you're going to put some highlight on that branch? Maybe just a few places, a little highlight on the branch. Just to show that there's a branch in there. You could, you know. You see a spot where the sun might have caught it. You just like look at your branch and go, could it use a little light? And some of this right there. I don't know why, but I felt like it. Balancing it out. All right. That's the step. We did it. It was kind of a big thing. If this is a new concept to you, it's okay if it feels awkward at first. You're all right. You're not alone. If you're here in the live, you've got lots of people you can reach out to who can encourage you. If you're here in the replay, you can leave up a comment going, aha, and I'm here to say, you got it, because you do, you have it. And remember, this is a journey. You don't have to have the first painting, like your first painting ever doesn't have to be the most perfect painting in the universe. In fact, if you can just let go of that concept of perfect paintings early, you'll be a very happy artist, because they don't actually exist. I don't know how to break that to everybody, but they kind of don't. There's a lot of awesome in the world of art, but perfection is kind of not what it does. So whew, let that pressure off. Yeah. But you can be as orderly as you want. So for those of you who like order, don't worry. <laughs> Come back and more details in the painting. Now we get to paint a happy little bird. Yay! And this bird is so happy. And he's singing. And he's got so a song happy. in his heart. It's like perfect for this year. Song in my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys ready? I'm going to show you how you can paint him. He's just a few layers. He's easier than you think. And you're going to love him on your wall. And you can do this. Ready. Breath. <sighs> Who's got it? You got it. All right, let's hop it. So first, I like to get in some kind of like rough sketched out idea. And I may actually go back to my number 10 bright to kind of get him loosely put in. Mm -hmm. He's got some cool colors down through here. And then he's got a spot of bright warm and then kind of a lighter range of cool colors up there. It's sort of like in the purple. So let's get into those purples. On him, I like to mix a kind of like a first a quinacridone, right? Mm -hmm. And altering blue, we're going to come in here. 
just make a strong kind of stroke back on his belly. You got that, right? A yeah. stroke back. And then on the edge here, maybe at the tail. Come up that way, a little bit down. Let's right here along his little wing line. Maybe also make another little strong line. Kind of showing where those go. Right? I might mm -hmm. come into my uh, little altering blue, little thalo blue, just more of a blue range here. Still pretty dark. As you can see, I'm just roughing that in. I'm coming back with green later, so not to worry. And I'll bring back a little bit of a tail. I'm going to add a little brown to this. I know, crazy. That's really cool. And let's make sure his wing has a nice little line. I'm going to stroke that back on the edge of the brush. Right. I don't want to do uh, too much where I know he's going to have uh, his orange because I want it to be super bright. Right. So we looking good in the neighborhood, Mr. Robin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to rinse this out a lot. Get two cups clean. worth. I want it pretty clean because I know I want this to be bright. So I'm going to take a little of my... Uh, yellow and cad red, and we're going to start right here. Ooh. Little yellow and that. I definitely want to come up around where the beak will be. Maybe a little bit up here. I use the corner of my brush if I need to. Might even a little orange right into that dark color. Yeah. And if the edge of my brush is good, I can come in and maybe do his leg. We'll see if it is. It is good. Ooh. Now, just to start. Probably get into a detail for that. And I know I'm going to want to be in a detail up on his face. So I'm going to switch to a number four round. All right. A little more brown into my blue-purple mix. See how it goes a nice kind of cool gray? Yeah. It's just sort of fun to get in here and be thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. Got some little feathers back here. Come back on a little black. You know, because his little feet. in the branches that's not bad no i want him here and then i'm gonna dry him okay all right so this is the start i don't want to keep painting on this wet i kind of want to layer it up a little bit in the dry so now we get to put the frosting on the bird a little bit start to get some of the fun expressive impressionistic colors and be really playful with all of our color mixes. We're kind of going to be in all the different things we've already done. Mm -hmm. So it should be like, oh, I did that earlier. Oh, I did that earlier. But again, if that's ever hard, remember you can, 7 to 10 days after this, there's a mini book and all those mixes are in that. It's like 20 pages of extra help. Yeah. So super nice. Matches the chapters. They're timestamped down below. Very good for you. It was a new thing we started in 2021. And now I guess we're done in 2022. <laughs> For you. But it does make a big difference. So let's hop on in and I'll show you the next layers of the bird. Okay. All right. I'm going to want to put a bunch of fun colors through here. 
But first, let's get into his little cute orange chest. All right. I'm going to get a little of my yellow over to my red. I'm trying to keep it away from the green because I want these colors to be kind of bright. I'm using a half inch angle. I really like them um, just generally as a little brush. And you can see I kind of use the corner and everything. If I want to deepen the orange, I go back into the red a little more. And I want to make sure it's, there we go, evenly mixed in there. Nice deep red. And I feel like, you know, we've got to get a little bit around the beak. And I can come into the yellow, much more of the yellow of the bird up here. Too much yellow. shaping in around that beak yeah you get a little yellow here maybe a little white and talk a bit about a bright highlight there like to make his little his little wing uh, very bright. And we can even pull a little of his color, say, into the wing here. Even though we know we're going to come back with other colors to kind of. It's nice when it peeks through. Mm -hmm. Let me take a little more into the CAD. Come up here a bit as well get a little of my brown in there that's fun so lots of bright colors there i'm gonna rinse out now i like to take my quinn and my ultramarine blue to kind of make his base color a little more in the blue I'm going to start kind of roughing him out. Oh, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring a little bit up in here through the feathers, and that kind of implies that those feathers are a little mixed there. I always get a little more blue on my brush. I want to round out his belly some. And then come across some little sort of rough streaks there. Get a lot whiter. Maybe a little more blue. To the top of his cute little head. And I will be in on his eye in a little bit, but I'm going to do it a little after. All right. Maybe go a little darker right there, like back of the head. And I can start adding some burnt sienna to the mix. It's sort of fun what it does. See how it, it's still kind of blue and purple, but it, it, uh, and then mutes it a little bit. A little yellow to it. I know that's very strange. We're going to come here and kind of brown that out. Yeah. And I'm going to let that orange sort of peek through. So this is a interesting mix that you've got to kind of think about. Interesting mix. Ooh, you're making little feathers. Yeah, you just kind of talk about the feathers a little bit. No, that was with your directionality, huh? Yeah, just making those little patterns. Now I'm going to add a little more blue here. I come here. 
We'll blend that back in. Look how that goes. Oh, yeah. Pull this back like those little feathers on the leg. Mm -hmm. That's nice. A little blue here. Mm -hmm. It's just you play this, right? You're going to play through. Just keep adding some paint here and there. Yeah, what, what you want to do is keep playing with those colors. And then as you play with them, he sort of just becomes part of it. Now, I've got my little gray color. You switch brush? Right. No, same brush. Okay. And and this is going to be kind of a surprise. So this is about that quinacridone magenta and ultramarine blue and white, sometimes adding thalo blue, sometimes adding burnt sienna. And it gets you in a very interesting gray. Surprise! <laughs> so I'm going to come on the corner of the brush and actually paint in the beak. But you could use a round if this is uncomfortable. Is that the surprise? No. Oh. Did I say there was a surprise? You said there's a surprise. Oh, man, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> okay. Other than it's an awesome bird, and there he is. Okay. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to come in. I guess that you can use the, the angle brush this way. I come in on the corner. Okay. And I can kind of. You know, I, I wonder how many videos you do that. Like, and there's a surprise, and then. <laughs> Probably Never way tell them too many. The surprise. Probably way it's too many. Like, I'm going to come into my little purple here. Definitely leave it in the comments. Do you remember that? <laughs> I've done I this would, before. I want to come read this. Let's too. add some purple right here. Oh, that's really nice. Bright and purple. And kind of through here. Or when you. Stop in the middle of a story. Yeah. And you just don't finish it. I don't finish it. That happens a lot. Are you implying that's happening right now? There's this one time where there's this dog and a bird. <laughs> and then you never finish. I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm adding a little bit of white highlight. Let's get him to here because that's pretty far along. Yeah. We'll come back and add a few more details. We've got a pretty colorful little bird here already, but it's not enough. Not enough. It's not enough. Not enough. We need more color. All right. You need more color in your life. This bird needs more color in his life, and we're going to do some finishing details. You know, it gives him things like eyes and a beak that opens and closes and <laughs> eats and things. The small things that allow him to exist in the painting. But so far, I'm pretty happy with how he looks, right? That's like just it. like... What a cheerful concept. It's going to look good framed on the wall. All right, oh, should yeah. we hop in? You I'm got ready. this? I got this. You got this? Let's do it. All right, let's do this. I'm back at the half-inch angle brush because I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's, uh, let's come here to this yellow and get a little white. Kind of really get um, maybe a little Ooh. light on his chest. And uh, maybe a little highlight right there. It's going to be around that beak sort of uh, eye area. I think it's going to look really nice. I might even get on my corner. So I want to bring the eye in. There can be a little bit of feather there. Yeah. I think it'll look good. A little bit of hint there. Just playful. Something to do. I don't need to get into my detail brush yet. I'm going to come in and uh, I think I'm going to get some green over to my uh, ultramarine, I mean, to my phthalo blue. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come here and that's too watery. Sometimes it'll happen in the mix. You just get too much water going in the mix and you're like, oh, that's not going to work. And maybe a little more green here.
A little more blue. Pull some white into this. Mm -hmm. That's kind of fun. And if I get some yellow, it's going to get real weird. I want to get a lot of white. Maybe a little yellow. Come right here. That's really nice. I like that. Maybe a little bit back here. Sometimes it's just fun to see where you can uh, stick interesting parts and like little micro mixes. Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, is it cool so it can go back there under that? But is it warm? It might go somewhere else. It's kind of a fun thing to play with. And I can push back the green really easily if I want to. Right? I can come in and get some real highlights on the half inch angle. Oh yeah. Just adding a little white to it. I'm gonna come here, get into that blue again. Make a little quinacridone into it so it's sort of like a muted purple, right? Mm. So phthalo blue and quinacridone uh, magenta don't make quite as bright of a purple. Make a real light color here. If I can get it light enough up here. Ooh, it was one shade lighter. See that? I do. Even lighter than that. I want to go even lighter. Push it. Just playing with that color. See if I like what I have. Oh, he looks so pretty, doesn't he? He does. He's just so colorful. Get like dark purple. Work it out. Okay. So I can put down this half inch angle brush now. He's pretty delightful yeah he's delightful and i'm going to get a little of this purple mix that i have here and again add the burnt sienna to it to gray it a bit which brush did you pick up number four round it's a okay. small round brush with a good tip synthetic thank you for reminding me to say something i'm gonna come here and make sure i got a little bit there I'm going to get into my kind of green color over here, but with the gray, I didn't really rinse out my brush. I'm going to start this, and then I can have like kind of like a little ridge when I come back with the block. It'll be quite nice. Quite nice. Quite nice. Back with this a little bit. little bird anatomy, sometimes it gets to me, you know? Huh. I'm going to come in and really get to a highlight here. I need more water sometimes to thin it so it'll come out. And I'm just adding white to whatever color I have on the palette, right? right and that just lets us kind of see those legs pop against that, yeah, that really does. background. You can always come back with your purple. Give it a little strength. Mm hmm Play with any of this stuff. Shadows any of it. Now hopefully, 
this little area right here is now dry. All right. I'm going to come into my black and thin it with my round brush again. If you need a smaller brush, you can get a smaller brush. I'm going to very carefully, leaving kind of this blue-gray, mm -hmm. and a bit of an eye, like a little seed. A little bit of a thought of a nose there, you know, these little yeah. details sometimes are nice. Well, that's looking very good. It really is. Now rinse that brush way out. Way, way out. I'm going to get even more white into that. The gray color I use there. Okay. Make sure I don't have any hidden drops on my brush. Looks good. Guess what? What's that? I'm going to put a little white dot. Oh, this is the part. This is just that end part, right? I'm shaking off any water drops that uh, get on ah. my brush. See, if I have too much water on there, it won't let me pick up the paint that way that I want to. I'm going to just add that to the back oh. of the eye. That's Look it. At that. That's Look at that. That's so cool. He's just a little, dig it. little burr, and he's just branching it, and he's just doing his little branch thing. He's good, man. He really is. He's good. You got he's, sign uh, him? looking for a partner. You're a bird out there. <laughs> <laughs> for a bird of a feather? <laughs> for a bird of a feather. <laughs> you want me to sign it? You're just making the signature sign at me, well, so I, mean, I guess can't, I... can't, like, not do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I'm going to sign it. <laughs> I was going to say some stuff, but I'll sign well, you it. You say stuff. You still got to sign it. Yeah, right. more st they're here for your stuff to say. All right. Let's get just a little color in there. I'm going to grab just, you know, any old little color in the palette. Uh, I like colors that I've been using in the painting so that my signatures don't. Um, and I'm going to sign. Um, sometimes you can sign up in there and sometimes you can sign at the corner. This time I'm going to sign down here because this is such a bigger canvas. To bring balance to the signature. Well, uh, it's just a much bigger canvas, so. So what were you going to tell everybody? I don't remember now. <laughs> oh, man, now they're going to be upset. <laughs> I have no idea anymore. <laughs> I got the hook and crook, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 I was just trying to, like, not <sighs> forget. All right, so this is gorgeous. Yes. We're at the end of the painting. I know we like to do some questions and answers at the end, so we're going to be here taking your live Q&A at the end. So stay around if you had a question that we didn't get to from earlier in the show. Probably we're going to get to it now. And, maybe um, and also tell you what you're going to do next. Yeah. So And, and maybe you'll remember what you were going to tell them. And maybe I'll remember what I was going to do. Probably not, man. It is really out of my head. <laughs> but it probably couldn't have been that important because I would still remember it, right? You ever have that where you're like, you thought a thing and it was really important. You think you remember it, and then you realize it was important, but you didn't remember. I don't know where it is in that scale. But what I do know is if you come back, we're going to say goodbye, and I'm going to answer some of your questions and tell you what to do next. All right. Come on back. So here we are. We have finished our bird, or you may be in some stage of finishing your bird. John, how'd you like the lesson? I love it. Thank Did you. you know, what? There's just one question. What? What'd you forget to tell me? I just told you just two seconds ago. I don't remember. See, I, I, you gotta and then remember. John's like, make something up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not great. The reason I'm not a good gambler, I'm just not good at that. Just, just yeah. not good at that. Look at me. My whole response to having dry eyes is wearing these crazy glasses. They're the skills we have and You've skills we don't have. Full and a wintour. <laughs> just the glasses from now on. That's all we get from the show. This is my version of Casey Neistat. <gasps> no, and a wintour. Anna went to her. Yeah. I'll do Anna. Anna's a little more fashionable than me, but I'll take Anna. <laughs> um, and she should, as she should be as more she fashionable be. than all of us. She should be. Um, Julie Brewer, I didn't get to answer her question before we went to the second oh, set of the video. And she wanted ass. to know what my favorite color is. And those of you who've been here for a while know it, but it's purple. Just my favorite. Which and purple? All the purple. Uh, all, all the purples. All purples. All purples everywhere. I just have purple eye. I think, uh, and then I like uh, burnt orange, and yeah. I like aqua, um, and I like magentas. You know, I have a grip of them, but 
If I just got one, I, I would do all the purples. But which one don't you like? Uh, purples? No, color. Mm, I don't really have a color I don't like. Yeah. It always yeah. has a purpose. Um, <laughs> not every color looks good on me. Let me tell you, neon yellow does not work on my skin tone. Um, uh, thank you, Wendy Vance over on Facebook for sending stars. Gwen Hill, uh, uh, hi, you're awesome. Haven't painted it yet, but love you. Still a little scared of it looking awful. I usually just draw, but I want to paint. So, um, Gwen, that's like, that affects everybody. Everybody's like afraid of their painting not coming out, right? And it, and not being how they hope. And one of the great gifts that if you can hang in through that experience that painting can give you is that you start to recognize, um, the beauty in what you're doing and you let go of um, abstract objectives about what is good and not good and you start to see the good in you not an easy journey i won't lie <laughs> yeah that, that's a journey to get there i have certainly uh thrown paintings out in the trash i have railed at paintings i have been frustrated at paintings um i think we all get there from time to time but it's seeing that the art's inside of you and that your creativity is perfect as it is that's the best gift that art can give you that is one of my favorite albums though mary myers <laughs> natalia said stars thank you uh and then patricia jordan said a very nice thing i want to learn how to paint use colors like this but i cannot afford classes thank you for showing us how to do it i love sharing how to paint and i do i'm very committed even though we have a patreon even though we have you know sometimes like gated gifts we always put the patron the patronage makes it so that i can put a bunch of free lessons out there Mm. Because if you guys have free lessons, you can go buy art materials. Yay. And art materials are expensive enough, right? And then you can paint stuff. And then you can paint stuff. Or draw stuff or sketch stuff or. Ooh, the bug asked the question Has the Sherpa ever explained why she does three tones? Um, three values is kind of a basic art construct when you're just trying to see shape. Uh, like if you do a fast study and you're just trying to throw a painting down, you do three values in the study. Three values really lets you see something. The deep shadow, the middle range, and the highlight, your brain fills in all the rest. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, uh, Elise Henley says, I think I am understanding if you want light on top, do uh, do day first and work up. If you do if you dark, then start with light and then work up. Right. Okay. So I'm glad that that got through. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Rob, for the 500 stars. Um, Michael Art, thank you so much, Cinnamon, for all you do. I really appreciate it. Beautiful bird. Michael Art, I thank you for showing up at so many lives and being such an incredible supporter. And we really appreciate that here. When you yeah. guys consistently come to shows and we and we do learn your names and we start to learn about your lives, like, again, not stalking. No. I'm it, not stalking, but we, we wanna, do know you. We want to do better for you. We want to produce better lessons. So getting to know you a little bit, what you need, what you what helps you, it helps us do better. Yeah, that's what, I mean, that's what I love about the group and why I like to go in and like paintings is I'm, I'm really just sort of listening to you. Uh, that's my number one job is to try to listen to you guys and um, make sure that you have what you need uh, for your art journey. So it's just a special gift to me. Um, then we have Catherine Lyons. I love how you paint loose. Why do I have a harder time with loose? I tend to want to micromanage all my paintings. Loose, in my opinion, is harder than realistic. Mm, yep. Five miles. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, it was... looks simpler, but it's actually harder. You have to understand value and color and hue. Um, a squinty technique. That and you the squinty went... technique. What was, was that squinty thing you told about? Impressionism. When you said, look at squinty with your yeah, eyes. Yeah, when you squinty at things, that's loose. <laughs> yeah, it helps you see loose things when you kind of squint yeah. at it. You can out of focus eyes. it. And then yeah. what are the major lines and values and shapes? But what loose teaches you is it teaches you how to relax and it actually teaches you more about how things are constructed in paint. I think sometimes in painting realistically does. I think they're both completely valid forms of painting. Always love both, respect both groups of artists completely. Um, uh, LOL, he's so funny today. Here's, oh, I, no, no, that was a moderator cat. Uh, right. John, loving your close ups today. Very helpful. Thanks. Um, Amy over had watched videos on how to train them. They're very trainable and sweet. I like that. Elise Henley, how do you blend colors more? I love it. How do you, how can you blend colors more? So blending, and I should do some more blending classes. I should do a blending tune-up. We should do a blending tune-up. Um, but basically that is about um, understanding the fundamentals of how color blends together and the tools that make that work really well. And I should do a thing where I share my 
favorite blending brushes and my favorite blending tools and why that blending works better. Because when you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's like those dot paintings at the mall. Once you see the sailboat, then all you can see is the sailboat. Can we, can we title it, Will It Blend? Da -da, da. Ooh, Linda Hall says the price of instruction on the blossoms and leaves is worth the price of admission, which was free. <laughs> so yay. <laughs> and the bird layers def uh, defining the coloring. Oh my, thank you so much. I, I really love this piece. Um, uh, Mima says, I wanted you to know that you're very appreciated. Thanks, Cinnamon and John. Gnomed. <laughs> and Laura Brown says, I have a question. Trying to paint a cardinal, but the bird I have is not a cardinal. How would I paint uh, um, I, a cone bond? I don't know what that is on his head. So what I would say is if you have a bird's positioning, um, and I'm actually having to go through this right now for the duck stamp thing, of like maybe I like a position of the bird, but it's not the right bird. Um, so what I would say is do a loose sketch or digital, get the image you're trying to convert into digital and then get a picture of a cardinal up and then make those adjustment, adjustments in the digital sketch and then apply it to your painting. That's a lot of what I do in my own. I, if you've never thought of that, to do that, definitely grab SketchUp or one of the free uh, digital painting softwares. You put your picture in there and you make those adjustments as you need and then you're like, oh, I see it, I see it. Um, can I do a painting with nothing but purples? Yes, I could do a painting with nothing nothing but purples. Um, Joy Sawyer says, I have painter's block at least once a year. How do I overcome it? So if you have regular painter's block that's coming along cyclically, um, I would uh, be very still for a second and try to understand circumstantially what's happening around me. Um, I can get painter's block for a variety of reasons. Uh, many of them are about uh, emotional and physical health care reasons. Like, so if my physical health, like my eyes goes out, obviously I can not paint. Or if I have a lot of chronic pain. Um, but also there's some mental stuff. There's certain mental strains that will throw me off. Um, if you're not painting and you want to get back into it and you feel ready to get back into it, sometimes I, I like to say it's like backing into it. Find another creative project that's attracting, attractive to you and then do that. Just get yourself back into the creative flow of things and then kind of, you know, hide the pressure of getting back into painting because mm. you don't want to make it a chore, right? You don't want to, you don't want to burden yourself with a chore. And sometimes we have very good reasons we're not being creative and we don't honor that there are times that human beings just need to heal or go through something and, they need a rest time and they need creative resets. Another thing that gets me back into being creative is going to art shows and art fairs and art museums because sometimes the creativity of other people sparks it in my head and then I'm like, oh, 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 I have an idea now and then I want to go do something. Creativity is catchy. Cheryl Johnson says, does it cost to send stars? Yes, but you don't ever have to send stars to watch the show. But it, it is money. It's a penny a star. They're very, very... At the time of this podcast... <laughs> Um, Marcy yep. says, I'm afraid that my painting will not have enough, enough definition with the blue background at the top of the bird's head. How can I define between them? So I had that problem too. If you watched, um, I had to make the area around him kind of darker so that the va light value of his head was popping. And then around his belly, which was darker, I made that lighter. Yep. So I actually played with the values in the background to cause him to pop out. Um, thank you, Donna Tolina, for the stars. Um, uh, Janet, do you ever zoom on in the stroke so we can see better? John, are you not zooming enough in the stroke? I must not be. We'll zoom more. I'll do more zoomy. We'll more zoom. That your note, your feedback matters to us, and it has been feeded back, and you will see in the next lesson more zooms. We will more zooms. Hopefully I won't overzoom. I tend to be a bit zoomy. <laughs> and Heather C., horoscope gnomes will be dropping probably in a big grip. Huh. Um, so what's between me and the horoscope gnomes is just the regular videos that I have to put out. And then I've got to get ready for acrylic April and somewhere in there, I'm going to drop a bunch of gnomes so, you, so that we can finish our gnome collection and feel gnome tastic and gnome relieved that it is done. Mm. <laughs> so, so I have all the designs. So I've just really got to paint them and get them out. And I think what happened is I got so overwhelmed by work last year and then, you know, uh, life. Some different things happened in my life that, that was challenging. And so it was hard to fit all the things that I love to do on the board. Um, I just hate when I do that to you guys. When I when one of my moments where I have my life thrown into chaos, throws chaos into your life. 
So I'm definitely, I'm a completionist, Heather, as you know, and I will get, I don't know when the gnomes are going to drop, but there's a grip of them that will drop. <laughs> Probably some Saturday you'll be like, that's too many gnomes. It'll be like a big bunch of them or something. I haven't worked it out how I'm going to release them yet. Um, but they're current right now. If this is your birthday month, there's an astronome for you to paint that you can do right now. That's there. Like there we got three, four months of them. So gnome closure. <laughs> gnome closure. Okay, guys. So listen, thank you so much. Um, oh, uh, my best suggestion, especially for us news painters, is to post the supply list earlier in the week so we have the opportunity to pick up any supplies we don't have. Mimi, we do, but I think no one's seeing it. We'll work on... So uh, Facebook on events, uh, and, and you're saying this for Facebook. So on the event, Facebook has a thing, and I fill out the materials in that. I don't think it's easy for everyone doing the event to see it. Okay, so... So I'm going to make sure that I also post it in the discussion as well to give you guys two chances to see it. Because I I, I, I feel like like on mobile or some somehow it's hidden. I can, I can probably comment a little bit on this. Mm. So when Facebook creates... Like we create a group uh, yeah. or an event. Right, you create this event ahead of time, and you put all the stuff in the event. I do, and, and the event has all that description. And then when I go live, it creates another live in. Well, in no, thing. I mean, but this is a consistent thing across Facebook, I know, and I think I, it's about the interface, and that it's just what I'm going to do is I'm going to just as a backup make sure that when I make the event, I make a duplicate of the materials. Yeah, we'll work that out, see if we can in, get it. In the event itself, so then you guys can know. Because I generally know at the point I'm posting an event, I know what my materials are going to be. Mm. I didn't used to, because sometimes I didn't pre-paint the painting. I just did it <laughs> off the show. But when I have a painting painting like this, I know what my brushes are and what my stuff is. And um, generally, at the end of recording, I should know what it is. So I will make sure that you have that, because it's a very reasonable thing. And... Um, the other place, if you're not seeing it on Facebook, um, sometimes it's easier to see on YouTube in the description if you can open the description up. And if that's um, not opening or behaving, um, on the website can be a place to um, see it. But I will also put it in the dis discussion because mm. that's an easy solve, you know, oh, in, the, in the metaverse, whatever we're, whatever the Mark Zuckerberg is calling it now. Maybe it'll be a virtual paint list and we have to go have it. I know I won't do this to you, but wouldn't that be funny if we had to go have avatars in the metaverse? To paint you know what? Paint I paint. think before you know it, we're going to be doing full AR painting experiences with each other. <sighs> oh, the speed of the world. It just goes and goes. Now I am going to go put another compress on my eyes and drop them. I expect to be recovered fairly quickly because again, I just started taking the medication. So it's going to be just a couple of days for it to get my eyes back to not the desert, the driest, driest desert. It's a rackus up in my eyeballs right now. My eyeballs are rackus. Sandworms are, I, I don't know. That's my experience. Um, <laughs> be good to yourselves. Seriously, take care of yourselves and be good to each other. And I want to see you without my glasses.